What I mean, amigos, Stars is back with the D Troop. My apologies on the one day delay on this video. Yoshifumi called me up on the phone. He's like, Darzis, where's the video at? And I had to tell him, my apologies. The neighbors were doing construction yesterday, so I just couldn't record. So we're here, chapter 140. And before we hop into this, this may be a shorter video just due to the fact that there's another one I need to put out on a topic that's a bit more pressing. That trailer? Let's just talk about the chapter real quick. Hey, I'm really a YouTuber, so I gotta remind y'all. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here. This is YouTube's one-stop shop for undead-unlit content. Ain't nobody else doing it like this out here, so let's get into this chapter. Operation Metamorphal commences January 9th, 1999, and although Fuko is reminiscing about the time she spent since her last encounter with Autumn, she's got no time to waste. There's Junior's already pressing up against the negator, so she says, huh, let's get this plan into action. Springs forward to go get bit by one of those Juniors and tells Gina, I'm using Soul Calibur, the rest is up to you. And I'm loving this confidence that Fuko's exuding right now. She trusts everybody around her and knows that, hey, I've seen you guys in different loops. I know you are the people who can get this job done. Live up to this moment, live up to this task, and let's get it done. But these people aren't hardened combat vets like Fuko. They do have second thoughts about what they're doing. And Gina actually has one right here, remembering that moment that brought her to this situation. Sharing a tea before Operation Metamorphal commences, Fuko tells Gina that she killed her in the previous loop. And Gina's a bit confused, thinking that, you know, we fought on the same side, and Fuko's just honest about it. I wanted to tell you this so you can understand this before you go into my head. We were on the same side. Things got complicated. However, you go experience this, and whether or not you change and want to be my friend, or whether or not you stay that exact same way, unchange. Let's just see what happens. And I really love this lead up and I'll explain why later, but just the embodiment of a true friendship was truly displayed in this chapter. And as Gina's mind fades away from that thought, we get back to reality. Nico and Ichiko beginning to deploy the chaff defenses in order to hold off Autumn as the soul caliber takes full effect and we get inside of Fuko's memories. And this part of the video is gonna be rather random. If you want a full analysis on the Unchanged arc, go watch my video on the Unchanged arc. It's not a highly viewed video, however, I don't even know if it's that good, I haven't watched it in a long time, but it's one of my favorite videos I've put out just because the Unchanged arc is one of my favorite arcs. And this kind of just is a nostalgia fest as we go back through that arc, but I wanna point out one thing. It is kind of cute how like Fuko's pudgy back then before she got the big body brolic working out with Shin. <laughs> the good old days, y'all the good old days. And I'm being a hypocrite because there's one thing from this portion of the chapter which young Gina says that I do need to highlight. As Gina watches these events unfold, she noticed not only that she was ridiculously strong, but that her and Fuko were fighting because they loved the same person. So hold on to that idea for a second. However, we transition scenes to the young Gina and the older Gina being able to converse with each other in their spirit forms. This entire interaction had me cracking up from the start to finish. Just seeing the old Gina acting like how you think the old Gina would act, just extremely energetic, extremely over the top. Like, oh my God, you're the young me? Oh, Jaunty Justy, that, that is good. Now that is a good nickname, Yoshifumi. That actually made me crack up laughing. Jaunty Justy for Jules? That is crazy. <laughs> now bring back that thought I told you to hold on to. As the topic of the new boss is brought up, Fuko, Gina obviously has a lot of pushback towards the younger Gina. She's like, I'm not helping you out. Why would I want to help out a romantic rival, somebody who I hate? However, you remember what Fuko gave to the young Gina as a good luck charm. That oversized fit that Gina was kind of clowning on had a reason to be worn. It's the same exact fit that Gina had been wearing her entire life, her and Daddy dearest fit. And I think it's really cute, cool, because Fuko cares a lot about Gina, wanted to be friends with Gina, and understood that that's really all Gina wanted, met the young Gina, and always was just a compassionate woman who was trying to befriend individuals. And it's crazy that the jaded and jealous individual who was that past Gina never wanted to change past that, didn't kind of understand that it wasn't about the romantic rivalry Undead was going to be with whoever Undead wanted to be with, but those two women could be friends at the end of the day, and it even goes further at the end of the chapter. Like I mentioned though, Fuko had young Gina wear that fit, which kind of revealed her true intentions to the past loops Gina. So she actually teaches young Gina the secret to using Unchange. Gina's perception of Unchange is controlled with the heart. No logic required. 
Just say something and it'll get done. You safeguard those thoughts with an unwavering heart and it'll bring change to unchange. And this is cool because it actually kind of explains why Gina became so strong in that previous loop. Deddy, dearest, the individual who actually kind of brought her back from the brink in the same vein that Fuko did. Remember that whenever Gina was talking to Dead, she always kind of alluded to the fact that she wanted to self defecate or to defecate? <laughs> she wanted to, you know, off herself. And that was kind of an unprotecting personality within her. So I imagine Unchained probably wasn't the strongest it ever could have been at that point. Even though she did capture Undead, it probably just, you know, still wasn't the strongest. But having a will, having somebody who you want to protect at all costs, somebody who is within your heart in this firm and unwavering way, probably made Gina entirely so much stronger, just like it does to young Gina right here. As she wants to protect Fuko and Nico and Ichiko and all those who she holds dear, Gina unlocks the highest potential, unchanged Done, and she brings those tendrils out, and she looks like she's about to handle Autumn with the quickness. An amazing chapter of Undead Unlock. I really need to edit this video so I can record another video about the stuff y'all need to talk about. However, the one thing I really wanted to mention at the end of this, because I think, like I said, this chapter truly epitomizes what it means to be in a friendship with somebody, and like, the closest knit friendships getting through anything it's like having the resiliency to overcome any odds and i think this statement right here really kind of embodies that a friendship formed between two ladies who were once at each other's throats will remain unchanged till the end of time and beyond and it doesn't even have to be that serious however i still highly feel this because like i have a best friend who we played sports against each other growing up and we actually weren't friends for a long time not until high school actually we always knew of each other but we were on rival sports teams growing up so we had this stupid irrational disdain towards each other however once actually getting in close to each other meeting each other becoming friends with each other we were inseparable friends for life i talk to this fool every single day like my best buddy and it's kind of because you overcome this stupid gap and it's the same way with fuko and gina you overcame this dumb thing which was just a man in between the two of them they could have been very good friends however there was just this lover in between them two and nobody wants to be in a triangle it's nice to be on a straight line so they were upset and it was the same way with me and my friend we had a bridge in between like well we had a hole in the bridge in between us but once that bridge was kind of mended you can have a great friendship and i think that goes for anything in life you know if you ever have a i don't know what i'm about to say nigga i'm fucking out of here what is, i'm not fucking inspirational <laughs>